Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the heathen, and sitteth in the seat that is calm full, but his delight is in the love of the Lord. And in this Lord, I see, I did the sun rise and sun down. He may go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth fruit fruit in the season. Him live never ago wither, and whatsoever him doeth shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now there, so them there like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore, the heathen them never go tan upon judgment that the sin among them in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord God. Ja, love the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them always and always. I go perish. Let the people of the Most High God say, Jo! Kadama we gruma beya te la e higzag beer tana histalina ba shante 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 kadama we gruma beya te la e he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I judge shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and them is safe many are the afflictions of the righteous but Jah shall deliver him from all of them and I give thanks our mouse of Bolisa. I don't know what to I was sick there for. I was telling you, boy, you are done. Oh, you are done. Oh, you are done. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonemo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking, the ingredients of so many different types, shapes, sizes, aromas, and even flavors. Put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot, subjected to some good amount of heating. In the aftermath, they produce food, and this food is super sumptuous in all its palatability. It's served not to the black pot, neither is it served to the ingredients, but to us, the eaters. Ironically, the black pot and the ingredients do not even partake in the eating of the food. It is as the eaters who do. Yet every time the black pot and the ingredients will rise to the occasion to make sure that some sure food is produced. What lesson can we derive from this? Generational thinking, sacrifice, and selflessness in a nation that lacks any of this is not deserving of being called a nation but an empty box. My brother, my sister, let us all be very patriotic. Let us all be selfless. You can't say you are patriotic when you are not selfless. You can't say you are patriotic when you are not generationally thinking. You cannot say you are patriotic when you don't sacrifice. How many of us will still go ahead to plant a tree that will take 30 years to grow when we have only five years to live on earth? How many of us believe that we have worked so hard to be able to reach where we are, to achieve everything we have, and we are the only people deserving of enjoying this? Think about it. Everybody plays a role in nature. It is only amongst human beings that we want to enjoy our own fruits. In nature, no entity enjoys its own fruit. The pawpaw does not eat its own pawpaw fruits. The sea does not eat its own fish. At the same time, the coconut does not drink its own water. They produce and give out. No wonder they say the more you give is the more you get. It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo. And here we speak truth to power. Here we don't criticize. But if we must criticize, we we'll only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. Here, my brother, my sister, is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. We are live on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media, B-L-A-K-K, -K, Empire Media. And remember, we are beaming across the whole world in all our bloom. This is the voice of the people. And the voice of the people is the voice of God. Remember, we are embarking on a 16 region tour, a 16 region tour of Ghana, the whole of Ghana. We started with Wa. We talked to so many different people on the streets of Wa and all over Wa. Then we went all the way into Bolga. We did the same thing. The first leg is ended. This Saturday, we shall be in Wale Wale where we'll talk to some wonderful schools. We go all the way to Gambaga, and then we return and go to Tamale, where we will be talking on the streets, in the market square, and also to the students of the secondary schools about patriotism. These are the next leaders of our nation. We want to grow a generation of patriots. And in every school that we go, we give the students gifts, we hoist high a flag of Ghana and we give miniature flags to so many of the students in the school. 
and then we found what is known as the Young Patriots Club. What is the club all about? They are supposed to be meeting and be talking about patriotism. We will take them on excursions to show them the historically beautiful places of Ghana and beyond. Our history, our sounds, and our culture. No two ways about that. My brother, my sister, we have written letters to so many companies. Not many have responded. But individuals have come out to support us, as you saw scrolling earlier. We encourage you to support patriotism. Can you imagine, in five years, the number of patriots we are going to be able to create all over Ghana? My brother, my sister, has been put in my heart to push this agenda of patriotism. It is the lack of patriotism that is making our nation go back. We have the gold, we have the diamond, we have the bauxite. But the greed and the corruption, if you are patriotic, you can never be corrupt. If you are patriotic, you will never be greedy. If you are patriotic, you will think Ghana first. That is why we are here, my brother. We are going round. In fact, every trip we take, we spend about 15,000 Ghana cities and more, depending on where we are going. We are appealing to you to donate to this cause. Any penny you donate to us, we would always make sure that it comes out. My brother, my sister, this is what it is all about. Many other people donated over the weekend. Their names are going to be scrolling. My brother, my sister, and I am most excited to say that people are hacking into this call. And yesterday we played you some videos of our journey. On Friday we shall have a whole documentary so you can watch what we do every week. My brother, my sister is the black pot. And donate to these numbers here. It's a matchup number and we also have a bank account. When you send us, we would always receive that. And we would acknowledge you and say thank you for what you have done. At the end of the day, Ghana is your land. Ghana is my land. Ghana is our land. And this is where we belong. Africa is our home. It's the black pot. A.K.A. Koko Shonemo. Where we speak truth to power. Today we have three stories. We must apologize for starting the show late. As usual technical issues every now and then. My brother, my sister, now that the uh, regional tour has started, there's a lot of work around and we are putting things in place time after time. And we'll make sure that everything settles right. We have three stories for you today. Come here, my youth. And we're going to be closing this show quite early today because we're starting late. So bear with us. Run the first story, my youth. My God. This one says, don't dictate to Ghana. Kwesi Prat, chief imam, won USA. Kwesi Prat, chief imam, won USA. In other words, Kwesi Prat and the chief imam are warning the US. What are they warning the US about? Who is Kwesi Prat Jr.? This is one of my wonderful mentors, a broadcast journalist who has been on radio for the past 55 years. He is a man of repute. My brother, my sister, this is Kwesi Pratt. Now with Kwesi Pratt, he speaks his mind and makes sure that he goes straight to the point. Now who is the chief imam? The chief imam is Alaji Nu Sharubutu. This is the man we're talking about. He garners a lot of respect. People idolize him. My brother, my sister, the two have come together to warn America to desist from dictating to a sovereign nation like Ghana. Kwesi Pratt said, and watch what he said. Who are you to dictate to a sovereign nation. Kwesi Pratt blast U.S. ambassador over LGBT. And what is the chief imam saying? From the office of the chief imam, this is it. Yielding to the West on anti-gay bill makes nonsense of our independence. Chief imam spokesperson. And this is what I keep saying every now and then. It's about our sovereignty. It's not necessarily about LGBTQI plus or any other thing. The sovereignty. Every nation should be able to stand on its two feet and take decisions without any force 
from any nation. Dures. Run it, make we see what I go on. See this. What is the chief imam's office saying? Sheikh Army Yahu Shaibu, the spokesperson of the national chief imam of Ghana, Sheikh Nu Osman Sharubutu, has decried the Bruhaha surrounding the approval of the promotion of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, that's the anti gay bill, into law. According to him, the chief imam and the entire Muslim community in Ghana are worried about the government bowing to external pressures for it not to pass the bill which was recently approved by the Parliament of Ghana into law. Speaking in an interview on Joy News PM Express program on March 5, 2024, Sheikh Shaibu said that uh, the bill must be assented into law as soon as possible because the majority of Ghanaians support it. He added that the government allowing Western countries like the United States of America and multinational organizations like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, to influence the decision on the bill is an insult to Ghana's democracy. That's straight away. I've said it time and again. It's an insult, and some of these people think that we are the animals that they have always thought that we have been. They believe that we are not civilized. After all, our leaders have given them reason to think so. Our leaders go to them begging every now and then, yet it was the same leaders that chased them out in the days of colonialism and slavery. If you don't want me, why do you run after me after I've left your country for you, you have degraded it and brought it so low. Now you are running after me to help you look after your country again. My brother, my sister, it brings tears into my eyes every day when I see things like this. The Ghanaian people are saying that they don't want homosexuality. They do not want lesbianism. It is a discourse that is ongoing. They say they are not ready for it yet. There are some people who said they are ready for it. Say, okay, let's take it to the Parliament House. Like in a referendum, the Parliament House sits on the issue. And 100% everybody in the Parliament House, representing all the constituencies in Ghana, appended their signature and their thumbprint to the proper human sexual rights, blah, 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 bill, the so-called anti-gay bill. And after it comes out, Mr. President said he is waiting for a decision from the apex court before he will append his signature to assent this law into law, the bill into law. My brother, it is sad. We all remember when we had the so-called E-Levy. E-Levy was still in court being debated. The legality of E levy. But Mr. President still went ahead to sign it into law, even though it was still in court. Mr. President is putting his money where his mouth is. The American people are looking at him so curiously. They are warning him, if you sign this bill, you are not going to get aid from us. My brother, my sister, so where is your democracy? Where is your independence? If you claim you are independent and you cannot follow your rules and the dictates of your nation, then you cannot call yourself independent. Am I right? Let's think about it very careful. The chief imam is saying that it's not correct. Kwesi Pratt says, the American people should not put pressure on us. Same way we cannot go to America and put pressure on them to accept polygamy. You can't go to America and tell the American people to accept polygamy. I'm fed up with the arrogance of America and the West. Kamala Harris was in, in this country. You heard what she said. She doesn't care what we think. She doesn't care what our laws say. All she thinks about is the fact that LGBTQI plus is a humanitarian thing. In other words, human rights thing. She doesn't care what we think about. What our law is all about. After all, it is us. But when it comes to LGBTQI+, plus, she is concerned. And she signed a check for us. Was it a bribe? Today, Mr. President, who has run down the economy, degraded every sector of our economy, 
still wants donations from the American people. My brother, I support the Americans if they slap sanctions on us because of our greedy leaders. You don't like gays, but you want the money of gays. You must be silly and hypocritical. That is why Mr. President is refusing to sign it. He had already told Kabbalah Harris that the bill will come to his table for him to be the final person to sign. Such an arrogant man. If the whole parliament house has agreed on something, we are waiting for a non-entity like the president to append his dirty signature before it works. I am angry at this. What kind of law is this? If the people of Ghana, backed by the parliament, have decided that this is what they want, we all might not like it, but because the majority of the people, it's a game of numbers, have accepted it, we must control to it. Mr. President said he alone can change that decision. Well, Chief Imam says he's not happy. Kwesi Pratt says, take your hands off. They will never take your hands off if you continue running after them and begging them for peanuts. Until we become sensible, until we put common sense in our heads and make use of the mineral resources we have and the human resources, we will continue to be tossed around like on the waves of the sea. After all, we stand for nothing. It's the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Next story, my youth. Now the next story says, Mahama should have been in jail, but come here. Who is speaking? Chairman Wuntumi. How many of us remember Chairman Wuntumi? This was the man who was running away from the Ashanti king for uh, some alleged very abrasive language that he used. He's the owner of some media houses right here in Ghana. He's a self-styled, small-scale gold digger. And he's a member of the NPP. He's the chairman of the NPP in the Ashanti region. He wields a lot of power. He said, Mahama, the ex-president, former President Mahama, should have gone to jail. But... This is Mahama. He was president at some time, vice president at some time. He was even an assemblyman at the time, an MP at the time. His father was an astute politician who was so close to Kwame Nkrumah. Find his book and read. Come here, my youth. Run the story, my youth. Why is Chairman Wun to me saying that Mahama should have gone to jail? Watch this. And this is coming from Ghana Web. It says, Mahama isn't in prison because Akufuado granted him presidential pardon. Wow. And this is wound to me a legend. Run it, my youth. The Ashanti Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, the MPP, Bernard M. Chibosiakon, a.k.a. Chairman Wun to me, has asserted that Former President John Dramani Mahama would have been in prison by now if not for President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. And interestingly, Kennedy Japan also said the same thing some few months back. According to him, the former president is culpable for the many acts of corruption which happened under his government, including the air bus standard. Speaking in an interview with on Wun to Me FM, Chairman Wun to Me indicated that President Akufuado has decided not to prosecute Mahama because he wants peace to prevail. John Mahama, if not for the fact that Akufuado has ruled Ghana for there to be peace, you should have been in jail by now. Run it, my you'd be quick. If not for the fact that Akufu Ado wants peace to prevail, just as we see former presidents being locked up in countries like Pakistan. The same thing should have happened here, he said in three. He added, if you look at the Airbus scandal, the Ameri deal, and the other corruption scandals, John Mahama should have been jailed. You, Mahama, are a candidate of, for treason. It is Akufu Ado who has given him a presidential pardon. That is why he's walking around freely. That's it away. If Nana Akufu Ado truly gave Mahama a presidential pardon, according to what Chairman Wun to me is saying, then Nana Akufu Ado is a traitor. Nana Akufu Ado is a thief. Nana Akufu Ado 
is more than just corrupt. He is the great grandfather of the demon Satan. What right has Nana Kufuado got to pardon a criminal, a corrupt person? Somebody who has stolen money from our country, a merry deal, a scandal, and much more. If it is true, then Nana Kufuado himself should roast in hell, not jail, hell. If John Dramani Mahama actually stole from the people of Ghana, Via corruption. Nana Akufu Addo has no power whatsoever to pardon Mahama if the matter didn't go to court for him to be convicted. Mahama can only be pardoned if he's convicted. You have not convicted me of any crime. Then some idiot sits on a radio station, semi illiterate who has no common sense. Because he can destroy the land and pick up the gold and destroy our flora and fauna. Can sit on some rotting radio station or TV station and spew out gibberish. This is nauseating. I am mad and angry. I do not like it when I hear them in opposition. When we come into power, we are going to punish this person. That person will go to jail, blah, blah, blah. And when they come, they speak stupidly like what we are hearing right now. This person should have gone to jail. It's because of the kindness of Nana Kufu Adu. That is why he's walking free. Then Nana Kufu Adu is a thief. He's a criminal. He is a candidate for not just jail, but hell. If Mahama truly stole from the people of Ghana, please get the money from off the stomach of Mahama. I will not support any man who has been utterly corrupt. Corruption is so deadly and bloody. Corruption is killing people. I just came back from Tongo. Tongo Sektek. The school children were begging me to come and help them build a dining hall. Tears came down my eyes. I went through Wellembele and the rest of the places. And you will see how stark, poor, these people are total abject poverty. Then you tell me Mahama through a merry deal, through Airbus, whatever. So many scandals. He is corrupt. And Nana Kufuado, for peace sake, he decided that, oh, go free. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I am hurt and angry. I am so hurt and angry. That's what I'm telling you. Nana Akufu Ado cannot support a thief. It's like somebody comes to steal from me. And I want justice. I am Ghana. Somebody comes to steal from me. I want justice. Another leader comes and says, Oh, it's okay that you have stolen from Ghana. I pardon you. You have no right to pardon him. Has he been convicted? I can't wait to see these people in jail. I can't wait to see these people at the gates of hell. What are you talking about? Who to me says Mahama should have gone to jail? Canada Japan said the same thing. Let us go into the nitty gritties of that. We don't want peace. We want the nation to be upright. I prefer an upright nation to a peaceful nation. Where there is no equal right, there can never be justice. Let's think about all this. I'm angry. And Chairman Wun Tumis thinks he has, he has said something wise. Nana Kufu Ado should be impeached because if it is true that he's a collaborator in the stealing of Mahama. So Mahama also comes. Oh, because you pardon me. Me too, I'm going to pardon you for the excesses and the stealing, the scandals, the robbery. Where would the country be going? Does it make sense to you? And these are the people who are chairman of Ashanti region. No common sense. And we bring them here to come and rule us. No common sense. The sense is gone. Because he has some gold nuggets. He walks around and people follow him. So he's a big man. We respect money and wealth more than common sense. That's just our way my youth. When we return... We got more. My name Black Rasta. It's the Black Pot, aka Kuku Shonomo, where we speak truth to power. Hey! Wayo! Kogu! Kogu!
countrymen my name black rasta when i was growing up as a child there was something called a courtesy for boys and girls that helped to train us and raise us up in patriotism but today a lot of this patriotism has been lost today our children are beginning to lose everything in terms of our heritage they have lost out on our history lost out on our greatness it is on the bedrock of this. I am embarking on a nationwide tour of patriotism. Remember, it's patriotism, not politics. We shall go to all the 16 regions of Ghana. And in every region, we will organize students and speak to them about patriotism. We will organize a small quiz competition where we shall give prizes out. And these prizes are going to be prizes that are souvenirs from Ghana. Right after that, we will organize a setting concert either in the market space or even on the streets, accessible to everybody. And we will catch the music lovers and deliver the same message to them. It's on the bedrock of this. I would like you to be part of this. Please donate to this great cause. We are raising a next generation of patriots. It's the lack of patriotism that is making us steal from our own country. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us feel like when we steal from the government, we are stealing from space. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us owe allegiance to some foreigners more than us. It's the lack of patriotism that makes foreigners come into this country and behave like demigods and we see them as such. My brother, my sister, donate so we can move out there. Maybe you want to give us something else in kind. We are ready for you. Our numbers are rolling on the screens and you can donate into our bank account or onto our phone number and we will gladly appreciate and acknowledge you this is the national patriotism tour that we have taken on ourselves to make sure that the nation ghana stands tall again like before my name is black rasta and i thank you for listening god bless you ghana shall prosper ghana will rise again bless you Goa, skip a judge. Blackboard, Coco Show, Rama. It's the Blackboard, aka Coco Show, Rama. Bless you. Now, the nationwide patriotism tour is on. All the 16 regions of Ghana we are going. We started last week. And we went all the way to Wa in the Upper West Region. My brother, my sister, I'm going to give you a full screen view of what we did. Give me a full screen, please. Full screen. And begin it properly. So we'll see when we left Accra. Right from when we left Accra. Begin it, please. Begin it from the top. Top. You know? area yes our car broke down and they were sitting down to get it fixed my brother we drove several hours the first school we went to was Wa secondary technical and here we are talking to the students you can see the students over 1,000 students all seated there listening to the message of patriotism my brother I was dressed this way because that was the way I came through the journey. We didn't have time to have a shower. We had to go straight to meet the students who had been waiting for us at Wasek Tech. 
we gave them a very beautiful lecture. Oh my God. They loved it. And at the end of the day, we gave them prizes after asking them a few questions. And those prizes, beautiful prizes. Oh my God. Of their prizes, left, right, and center. And some of the students came to sing to me. They want to be musicians and they wanted me to help them with their career. And then we went to the next school. Oh, yes. And this is a Tongo Sektek. Tongo Sektek, where the students, though it's a day school, they all came to the school. And you can see some white people in there. They are all volunteers from England supporting the, the school. And this was where we went and spoke to them. We gave them flags, as you can see them holding. And then we gave them hampers as well for answering some beautiful questions. Oh, beautiful, beautiful people in there. And then everywhere we went, we hosted a flag of Ghana. Even if they had one already, we still gave them another flag of Ghana and left a lot of miniature flags. This is Big Boss, Borgatanga Secondary School. That's where we went. And then the school here is Wa Secondary, Wasek. It's produced a lot of wonderful people, these schools that we went to, great people in our society. And this one we did it at 9. This is about 8 p.m. All the students had been waiting. They wouldn't go anywhere. They waited for us to be able to come and speak to them. And they were all excited. 8 p.m. was when we spoke to them. I sang some songs, and then it was all beautiful. Oh, gosh. Mm, 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 mm. It's the black port. Our tour is ongoing. This week, we are going to be going to Wale Wale, Gambaga, and then we'll hit the capital of the northern region, Tamale. We're going to be speaking to thousands of people on the streets, in the marketplaces. We will do that. My brother, my sister, it is time to sacrifice for our wonderful nation. Are you donating? We look forward to you sending in some money to us. Maybe you can send us food. Maybe some milk. Maybe some milo. Because when we go to the schools, when they answer the questions, we give them some things. Maybe it's cash you can give us. Maybe it's food you can give us. Maybe even accommodation. Maybe fuel vouchers. Oh, we'll be so glad. We spend so much money on fuel. We'll be glad to have that. Maybe you can also give us some shopping vouchers. We will gladly give these to the students. And then on this journey, we are so thankful that you keep on supporting us. These are some of the people who have donated money to us. Ibrahim Isifu gave us 200 Ghana. Uh, Sentia Bremo Enterprise, somebody sent money from there. He didn't tell us what his name was. 151 Ghana cities, 50 pesos he sent to us. And we have been so happy receiving some of these donations. Don't ever look down on your donations. We are spending our own money, and it is interesting. We are just looking forward to seeing Ghana grow again. And remember, in every school we go, we make sure that we form what is known as uh, the Young Patriots Club. And the Young Patriots Club is about young people coming together. We take them on excursions. We show them the beauty of Ghana and much more, the history, the culture, the heritage. And we tell them that they cannot afford to let Ghana down. Can you imagine what this will grow into in five years? It's going to be a nation of patriots. Don't you ever underrate this movement. It's mad. Movement against disorder. Let's make sure it happens. It's the Black Port, a.k.a. Kukushunumo, where we speak truth to power. Let's see your comments. And then we move on and finish with our final story. Today we decided that will be very brief. Let your comments come in. All right, so send your comments coming in, and then we'll make sure that we read them time after time. All right, so Bright Smart says, hello, Black Rasta. Please, is the program scheduled for 7.30 p.m.? I am your fan. I'm just coming back from Togo. I don't feel okay uh, when I miss your program for a day. Yes, I agree with, with you. No, it's scheduled for 5 p.m. But we have challenges time after time. Doom saw lights going off. We don't have our own plant, so we depend on the national grid. Sometimes we are also overwhelmed because of this tour that we started, a lot of work, and sometimes we start a little bit late. But we endeavor to always start on time, 5 p.m., as we've always done. 
So yes, tomorrow we're going to be here at 5 and we'll make sure that everything is done. Thank you so much and we apologize for starting the show late today. Sophia Suleimana says, bless up the king of uh, patriotism. Woyoy. Benjamin Achu says, bless my brother Black. Mohamed Benjer once says, Anula Mbiale, Tesama, uh, uh, Tesama Amrna. Anyway, we are still together in spirit. And he says, all, all times. Yes, all times. Run the story, my youth. Come here. Okay, he's asking to Sama Lantame. Has our time changed? No, our time has not changed. It's still 5 p.m. We would make sure that we come at 5 p.m. And then we blast it up. Forgive us for starting it late. MC Scorpion from Ashaiman put in that. He says, Suraj Usedu says, Black, much love. Kojo Wanful says, Good evening, family. Sending more strength and energy to continue the work. Like, share, and thumbs up. Patriotism is the way. Blessed love. Thank you so much. Danny Mens says, Can you please explain the headline of Mahama must be jailed? Uh, that has been associated with you. Thanks. Oh, yo. What tag is that? What tag is that? We need to check it out. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's see what you're talking about. Are you talking about the first story that we, we, we spoke about? Well, <clears throat> that's somebody saying that, and we are saying that if it is true, what this person is saying, it has to be investigated, and whoever is supposed to go to jail or pay for it must pay for it. It's simple. It doesn't matter whether it's Mahama, whether it is Jonathan, whether it's Kwame or Mensa. Anybody who hates our nation must pay for it. Simple. Wanini boy says, good evening, Black Rasta. Uh, good evening, Black Rasta. He said, well, yo, Nabon Pyramid says, and we got something from Nabon Pyramid. Thank you so much. His name will be scrolling soon. You'll see that. Good evening, Black Rasta. He says, keep spreading the good message, the ancestral Connection is within you. Then the man says, what an iron. Anytime Ghana is at the brink of a major change, the UP, uh, Buzia, Dombo tradition is always in the way. They did that to Nkrumah uh, during the independence fight. Yes, that is very true. Independence fight, it fought Kwame Nkrumah so much. And even when he was president, they were still fighting him. Then the man says, it's such an irony. Mm -hmm. Okay, he wanted to say what an irony. Irony. All right? All right? That's what it is. Okay. So let's take the very last story. Come here, my youth. Professor Nana Opoku Ajimai warns against dead brains. Warns against dead brains. Who is Professor Nana Opoku Ajimai? This is the woman. Come here, my youth. She partnered John Dramani Mahama during the presidential elections that just went by. And some people are still rooting for her to continue partnering Mahama. She is an educationist, astute, solid, and learned. She is a professor. Who is a professor, a university teacher? She is saying something that interests me so much. Run it, my youth. Watch this critically. Let's stop being consumers of other people's knowledge. Professor Nana Opokuajimai challenges youth. Hey, this is deep. Let's stop being consumers. Of other people's knowledge. Professor Nana Opoku Ajimai challenges youth. Run the story. The 2020 running mate of the opposition National Democratic Congress, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajimai, has challenged the youth and students in the central region to be innovative in their thinking, pursuits, and in the application of knowledge. That's it. I'm done. My brother, come here. What is she talking about? It looks like in Africa, we just sit down and consume other people's findings and knowledge. When Ebola comes, we are waiting for the white man to research, get knowledge, and come and tell us how to deal with Ebola. Even malaria, all these years, 
The white man has no malaria. We have malaria. And when we sit back, my brother, it is crazy. We are still waiting for the white man to bring us medicine to fight our malaria. My brother, they said there was a vaccine for malaria. And if you checked it out where the vaccine was coming from, you'll be shocked. Recently, coronavirus came. We were dying in our droves. We were waiting for the white man to provide us with the knowledge to fight this. For how long can this continue? Nana Upukwajimai, professor, is saying that we must stop being consumers of other people's knowledge. We have taken an entrenched position. As for us, we won't think. We are waiting for other people to think for us. That's what she's saying. And it's correct. We are not innovating. We are copy copy. We are not ready to think new. We are always thinking backward. We are progressing retrogressively. Jesus. It's terrible. Come here, my youth. I look at some of these things and I cry. Why is it that up to this time, we have not been able to build planes right here in Ghana, right here in Africa? Do we build ships here? Why? Don't we have the acumen all these years? We have mining schools, yet none of our mines in Africa is controlled by Africans. It's the Chinese, the Americans, the British. They are those who control that. Are we dumb? You have been blessed with gold. You have mining schools in Africa. You are not producing material to be able to come and own your mines. So when they come in, they give you 2% and take 98% away. That is what Nana Opokwajima is talking about. Archaic information. Stereotyped information. You go to school. They are still learning and studying scientific facts that happened 6 million years ago and have been reviewed 7 trillion years ago. Archaic material. Science is progressive. Even history is progressive. You go to some of the schools. Recently I was told that when I was told and taught that we have nine planets, the whole thing has changed. Now there are eight planets. I said, how? How did it happen? But that is science. But you still have some of these people teaching people that there are still nine planets. It might be a very bad example, but there are other such examples. My brother, until we decide to be masters of the game, the masters that we were several years back, remember we were the first to do this open heart operation. We were the first doctors to do that. We invented so many wonderful things. We taught the world new things. What happened to us? Is it the unnecessary injections that we've been getting? Nana Upukwajima is asking us to desist from becoming consumers of other people's knowledge and produce our own. Let's juxtapose this with productivity in Ghana. We are always importing. She's telling us we are importing too much from other people's kitchens. It's time to produce our own goods and also export. Simple language. Nobody could have said anything better in these times than what Nana Upokwajiman has said. I am an advocate of this. That's why when you are writing your master's and your PhD, they want to find out what is new about this research. But no, we go through the same old things, bring back the same old things, put everything together and get a degree with no pedigree. It's the blackboard. A.K.A. Kokushonomo, where we speak truth to power. It's time to pack up and go. When we return, we will be saying bye-bye to you. My name is Black Rasta. Hey! Weyo!
Cocuchona, man. It's the Black Pot, a.k.a. Coco Show. No more time now to say bye-bye to you. Well, my attention has been drawn to some information going around that I said Mahama would have to go to jail. Please listen to the tape. In Ghana, people have a way of doing anything, twisting and turning things around. If there's a tape, listen to the tape properly and take your own decision. It's the Black Pot, a.k.a. Coco Show. No more. Final message is Nabon Pyramid said, Black Rasta, I told my mother about you and she said, you are my grandfather traditionally. No wonder I carry your DNA. You are right. You are my grandson. Yes, yes, I do. I know what you're talking about. Calvin Abbey says, Black Rasta, I think the hate is too much when it comes to Akufuado. You hate him too much. Mm. Are you sure? I don't hate anybody. I dislike people's bad character. I don't hate Nana Kufuado. Anybody who is against Ghana is an enemy to Ghana. Why should I hate Nana Kufuado? How many years does he have more to live as a human being? How many more years do I have to live as a human being? No, 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 no. I'm not interested in any hate. I'm interested in being focused and talking Ghana. You should have told me. What, why you think I hate him? Somebody who is that corrupt, watching over corruption, so arrogant. And when we say that, we tell you why we think he's arrogant and he's corrupt. So you to tell me why you think I hate him. Or is it evil to criticize and say that somebody is bad? We should sit down and watch the country go down. Why should I hate Nana Kufaru? Harriet Amu. Says, Black Woyoy, greetings to you and your team. Now, Bon Pyramid says, I'm praying to the Most High to give me more strength to follow your footsteps. I will be 26 years young in May. Wow. Right? Your prayer is answered. And Sonda Olivier says, the more USA makes comments about LGBTQI+, the more we get ignited. Mm -mm -mm. If a lion likes roaring, if I roam in the night, they will treat it like a puppy. Yes, if a lion likes roaming in the market, they will treat him like a puppy. Adams Wade says, very nice program, Black Rasta. God bless you. Try and update the videos on YouTube on each school for us. Yes, on Friday you'll get that. Yeah, Friday you get that. All right. Well, my name Black Rasta. Come here, my old. I want to say thank you so much. Please keep sending in your donations. Keep supporting this course. At the end of the day, you all will be super excited. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunumu. And here we speak truth to power. See you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Wayo!